Hi, this is Dominic Giles, and I just wanted to do a quick uh, introduction to Oracle Database Sharding in Oracle Database 12C Release 2. So, uh, over the next few minutes, we'll be going through what sharding is very quickly, um, and then discussing how it differs from, say, something like Oracle Real Application Clusters. We'll a, take a look at the steps required to install um, Oracle Sharding, and then actually run through those steps. Um, in part one. In part two we'll come back to the configuration we've created and then run some transactions against the sharded database. So what is Oracle sharding? Well Oracle sharding is taking a logical database and breaking it down into smaller isolated databases and each one of those sharded databases if you like holds the information related to um, a component of the data set. So in this particular instance we have the customer's uh, database and we've broken it down um, over a number of regions and what those regions will contain will be entirely based on the shard key, the most important part of a sharded database and that sharded key may be based on the customer's ID, it may be based on a regional ID, it may be based on a warehouse ID. It's entirely down to the way the application is defined. Now, sharding is different from real application clusters and data guard in that it serves a specific requirement, and that is to service um, you know, applications that require web scale performance um, comprising of uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of users um, scaled to those particular levels. It's designed for typically simple applications that have been designed from the very outset um, with a shard key in mind. Um, whereas you can take any application you like and drop it on top of real application clusters and data guard and it will work, um, Oracle sharding needs some specific thought about how you're actually going to do things, both in terms of um, designing the application and largely about how you're actually going to manage that configuration as well. Now, the benefit of adopting Oracle sharding is that you'll end up with this linear scalability. You'll be able to add nodes to your sharded database and benefit from higher levels of ingestion or select or operations from our sharded database. We'll also benefit from very high levels of fault isolation because all of these shards are um, isolated from one another. They have no idea that they're taking part in a sharded database we can lose any one of those components and we'll still have access to the vast majority of our sharded configuration. And we can make it even more resilient um, by building replicas into our sharded configuration or even leveraging um, other technologies like real application for each individual shard if that's a requirement that we have as well. The important point here is it benefits from all of the uh, goodness of Oracle in the, all of the security, all of the asset transactions that we've enjoyed, um, uh, all of the core functionality that makes up the Oracle database is available to us with Oracle sharding. Now what does it look like? Well, Oracle sharding um, at its heart is made up of three core components, the shard directors, the coordinated database and the shards themselves. Now the shard director is responsible um, and it acts very much like a listener, so it takes connections with the shard key and then routes and provides that information back to the application server where it can find that um, database that it can connect to. And it only um, takes part in the initial transaction for um, the application server. After that, the shard application server can go directly back to that given database without having to um, ask the shard director where it needs to go. The coordinated database holds our meta inf metadata information um, and acts as a um, single point for um, performing uh, queries that need to execute across all of the shards in our configuration. So if we have a cross shard query, cross shard database query, um, the coordinated database would break that query into the constituent components, execute those in parallel, take the information back um, and aggregate the data for us if needed and provide it back to our um, to the end user. And then the shard databases themselves um, are just standard Oracle database uh, databases with the information held inside of them. We've extended um, the functionality of the Oracle database in 12.2 to understand um, better 
what a sharded object actually is and then introduce functionality that makes it much much simpler to deploy um, sharded databases moving forward. The nice thing is all of the connectivity that we expect from our Oracle database is available um, with Oracle sharding as well. So you can connect via um, a JDBC or .NET um, or OCI or leverage technologies like Oracle's universal connection pool to provide um, a high level of resilience and scalability for your application servers connecting to your sharded database. So in part one of this demonstration, we're actually going to go through and deploy a sharded database to a very simple configuration. Um, I've got three virtual machines which we're going to deploy this um, sharded environment on top of. They're all based from a single um, inbit base image. That base image contained the Oracle database software for 12.2 and the Oracle GSM software 12.2 all installed in separate Oracle homes. Um, from that base image we created the three virtual machines, the first being the shard director and the shard director will act not only as the name implies as the shard director but will also contain the oracle shard catalog as well now in a production environment you're likely to have multiple shard directors and probably a dedicated server running the oracle catalog database in this particular instance we've got it grouped on a single server alongside of that we have our two shards a shard one and shard two um, initially, they're going to start off with just the Oracle software installed on top of them. When we deploy um, the software to these individual shards, they'll end up with their own dedicated database um, as well. So as I said, this is just a simple walkthrough to give you a feel of what's actually going on and is not um, a typical of a production environment. But let's talk through the various steps that we're actually going to run through. The first is to build the database and install the catalog database inside of that database for us. And that will be our first step and um, the next step will be to go through and to create the shard director and start it in our environment then we're going to need to go through to each of the shards in our configuration and create a um, scheduler agent on each one of those shards and that shard scheduler agent will be responsible for the initial creation of the database and any other additional administrative tasks from there on in we'll also define a shard group which is our um, logical unit of replication or redundancy inside of the Oracle sharded database. Now in this particular example we're only going to create one um, but in a production environment you may have more than one or potentially two or three um, shard groups uh, in your environment. Then we're going to create the shards themselves or define the metadata associated with those shards and the final step will be where we go through and deploy that configuration to the shards in our um, on top of our um, virtual machines and that will be part the end of part one and then we'll come back in part two and actually create some tables and run some transactions against that so um, before we go any further it's just also worth pointing out that we're going to be doing this all from the command line you could equally um, easily and in fact it's certainly more easily do this from within enterprise manager and deploy the architecture from in there you can do follow nice graphical user interfaces and hit the button at the end here we're actually going to use a command line tool to explicitly show you what's actually going at this point in time having said all of that let's get started okay then so what we've got here is um, our three virtual machines. On the left we've got the shard director and on the right hand side of the screen we've got uh, shard 1 and shard 2, our three virtual machines. <clears throat> so the bulk of the installation obviously is going to be driven from the shard director and what we can see here is that I'm um, installing the database using database configuration assistant and we're going to create a database called cat it's going to be a generic single instance database nothing particularly uh, special about it and um, we could use rack or data guard but for the simplicity's sake in this particular configuration we're just going to use a generic 12202 um, database to do our 12201 um, database to do our installation uh, against. So this is going to run for about 10 minutes and rather than subjecting you to that I'll come back to you when the installation is completed. 
So we're back and the installation is finished. As I said, it took about 10 minutes to complete on this virtual machine. And if we actually look at the running processes, what we can see here is that we've got um, the processes associated with the CAT um, database. Now, um, there's a couple of administrative things we actually need to do before we begin the installation of the shard configuration proper to the database that we're going to use as our catalog database. Um, so the first uh, thing is to do is to unlock a couple of accounts that we're going to be used for our shard configuration. First of these is the GSM uh, cat user. Um, and now that account is unlocked, we need to make sure that we give it a sensible password that we can connect to. In this instance, um, we're going to use the password welcome one, and that's going to be true for all of the accounts that we actually create. The next is to create an administrator. Uh, account for um, the uh, director and that's going to be called GSM admin and again in turn we go through and grant him connect session and access to the GSN admin role. <clears throat> so all fairly straightforward so far just a final operation um, to perform at this stage and that is to go through and to um, and make sure that uh, we allow the GSM ad in admin internal role the ability to inherit privileges um, from SIS. Um, so that's all of the work done inside of the Shard Directors installation. Now we're going to come back and move on to the GSM infrastructure. And to enable me to switch between them, I've created a little shell uh, script here called gsn.shur. I'm just going to source that and that will set my um, uh, environment variables and paths for the GSM software. The utility that we do a lot of the control and configuration for um, a shard um, from the command line is a utility called GDS, uh, GDS CTL. Um, so the first thing to do, <coughs> and you can ignore the warnings, is to create a catalog. And this will point to the catalog database we've just created. Um, and it will indicate that the region we're actually working against. Um, and a, a couple of other things to point out, uh, we also specify a agent port for our <coughs> scheduler agents. We're setting that to 777 and giving it a password of welcome one. Um, you can ignore the chunks uh, um, uh, parameter here. We're gonna come back to that in part two. So now that we've actually created the catalog, the next obvious step is to um, uh, instantiate the um, shard director, um, simple command, um, we just point it to the catalog database uh, and that's it. And now we can start it up. So again, simply a case of running um, start GSM and we're away. Okay, so now that we've actually got the uh, agent running, the next step um, we need to do is to go through and um, uh, create the credentials that we're going to use between all of the shards in our environment and that's the credential the OS account OS account Oracle and that's password is also Oracle uh, in this particular configuration for simplicity's sake we're going to use this credential throughout the rest of the installation um, having created the credentials the next uh, two steps are to go through and to um, uh, create the um, shard agents, or the scheduler agents on each of the shards in our configuration. So we go to each of them those in turn. Just pointing out here that um, as part of the installation, we also are going to need the Aura data and the uh, fast recovery area to be created. So I've just created those uh, off screen. Um, now that we've got those directories uh, created for us, we need to go through and um, uh, register the scheduler agent um, against the uh, catalog database that we've uh, created. And if you remember, um, that was on the shard director and we specified a port of 777 and our agent password, again, if you remember, was welcome one. Now that we've actually registered the scheduler agent with the catalog, we need to go through and make sure that it's uh, actually started. And so here we go. So it's already been run on this particular um, shard node. On this particular shard too, to get exactly the same through process, register the actual scheduler agent with the catalog and then start it up. 
and that's all that we need to do on the shards. The rest of the installation on these particular shards will be driven by the shard director. Okay, so coming back to the shard director, um, we've got a, the fast, last few steps. The first is to create a shard group. This is our um, level of redundancy inside of the configuration. Since we've only got one shard group, um, oh, and we haven't got any other redundancy, um, all that we need to do is to create this command once. If in a production environment, we clearly would be going through and creating a number of shard groups. Then we invite the actual nodes themselves um, to the actual shard group. The next step is to create the shards. And, and to do that, we simply say create shard, identify what shard group it's in, um, what node it's on, the credentials it's actually going to be using, and the final command, which is the template file it's going to use for the creation of the database. And in this particular instance, we're using the one from DBCA, but it could be a user-defined template file as well. So we've created um, the uh, the metadata for this particular shard at this point in time we need to do exactly the same thing for our second shard in our configuration. At this moment in time, nothing's happening on the shards. Um, we're just creating the actual metadata. The final step that we're, uh, we need to do for this configuration and deployment is to go through and to just issue the command deploy. <coughs> and what this will do is uh, ask the scheduler agents to go through and create the databases on each of those shards. So as soon as we hit deploy, that process will kick off and it will run in parallel across as many shards as we have in our configuration. So we hit deploy. And now if we zoom out and go to each of the shards, um, we'll be able to see uh, what's going on. So let's uh, first go to shard one. <clears throat> and if you can see, we'll just go through and start launch a um, Monitor, assistant utility monitor um, just to see what's actually going on on the box. Actually, it's, the wrong, uh, it's in system tools. So here we sort, launch the um, uh, process monitor and we can see that CPU is being consumed and that's part of the installation configuration. And again, if we do exactly the same thing on shard two, we'll see that the process um, is kicking off. Now, this is going to take a while. So here we are after um, about uh, five or 10 minutes we actually have our shard database uh, created on each one of the shards. And in fact, if we go into any one of these shards, um, we will be able to see um, the actual table spaces that have been created during that deployment process. Each of them is actually named after based on the template we specified earlier on. So this is uh, SH1, shard one, the database on SHA2 will be SH2 and so on. And here we can see the various table spaces that have been created. And this largely completes the actual uh, configuration and installation of the shard database across our two shards from the shard director. What we're going to do in part two is come back and finish this uh, demonstration off by creating um, uh, some tables and running some transaction against it. So thanks very much and see you soon.